O Lord, how long shall I cry for help and you will not hear? Or cry to you violence and you will not save? Why do you make me see iniquity and why do you idly look at wrong? He's saying, how long, Lord, do you want me to look out and see all this? There's violence, there's strife, there's contention, there's misery. There's suffering. Where are you, God? Why are you allowing this to happen? So here's God's response to Habakkuk. He says, Look among the nations and see. Wonder and be astounded, for I am doing a work in your days that you would not believe if told. This wasn't the response that Habakkuk was desiring. So what does he do? He questions God again. What is it that causes you to question God? Maybe the death of a loved one has caused, has caused you to wonder why God would allow such an incredible person to die. Maybe you've seen the suffering of a friend or a family member and cannot shake from your mind the questions of why. Why, God, won't you just heal him? Or why, God, can't you just cure her? Or maybe you're going through an intensely personal situation that has you asking questions like, why, God, is my marriage crumbling all around me? Why, God, is my son in slavery to drinking and drugs despite being raised in a godly home? Why, God, am I struggling with this addiction? I I try my best to give it to you, but all too often it gets the best of me. How long, Lord, will you remain silent while I'm losing my job, while I'm losing my home, while I can't provide for my family? Why, God, when I'm doing my best for you, am I experiencing the worst from others? These are all honest questions. And the best thing that we can do with them is to bring them to God in prayer. Bring all your doubts and all your worries to him. He he won't get offended. You won't insult him. Go to him for answers. And here's what he says in chapter 2, verse 1. I will take my stand at my watch post and station myself on the tower and look out to see what he will say to me and what I will answer concerning my complaint. Habakkuk knew that the solution to his confusion and his complaints could only come from God, so he waits. Let's remember that like Habakkuk, we must take our stand upon the watchtower, high above the clouds of the earth and beyond the thoughts of men, where we can quietly wait upon the Lord until he responds. That's what Habakkuk did, and then God does graciously respond to him. Behold, his soul is puffed up, it is not upright within him, but the righteous shall live by his faith. The righteous person isn't someone who who tries to to make good with God by, by keeping to a set of rules, by doing good works, by doing good things. The righteous person is a sinner who has been declared righteous by God because of his or her trust in the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. That is the only way a person can be declared righteous by God. There is no other way. Habakkuk knew that difficult times were coming to the people of Judah, but he also understood that their only resource was to wait on God, wait on Him in faith, trusting His word and resting in His will. So I don't know the amount of pain or anguish that you came here with this morning, but I do know that your only resource, your best resource is to bring it to God, to wait on Him and to trust His Word. For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. God has a greater plan for the earth than the evil it currently suffers. And God has a greater plan for you than the pain or the hurt or the sadness that you might be suffering. There will be a time when God will once and for all destroy all evil and will wipe away every single tear from our eyes. We don't only have the guarantee of of this final and and complete glory then, but we have access to this glory right now because of Christ. Here's what 2 Corinthians 4.16 tells us. It tells us that God made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. In other words, You became filled with God's glory when you put your trust in Jesus. So enjoy God's glory in in the current situation you might be in. And rest assured that every difficult season of your life will one day be transformed into a complete and eternal glory. A glory that is so magnificent that it's beyond our own comprehension. 
see, Habakkuk's cir circumstances hadn't changed. His questions didn't all get answered the way he had hoped. But what had changed was him. He changed. His waiting on God transformed his worrying into worshiping. Let me say that again. Habakkuk's waiting on God is what transformed his worrying into his worshiping. Though the fig tree should not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, the produce of the olive fail, and the field yields no food, the flock be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord, I will take joy in the God of my salvation. God, the Lord, is my strength. He makes my feet like the deer's. He makes me tread on my high places. And what he was essentially saying was, God, though everything around me is crumbling, though the economy is tanking, though I'm experiencing and witnessing utter evil and suffering, Lord, though I feel destroyed, though I have nothing, I will worship you. And though I have nothing, because of my faith in you, I don't lack anything. He says, I will rejoice in you, my God, for you are my salvation and you are my strength. You alone are sufficient for every situation. Whatever trial or hardship you might be in, whatever suffering or pain you might be experiencing, whatever the circumstances are, rejoice in God and worship Him. Because the truest expression of our trust in God will always be worship. Worship. 